G'day Poetry Geeks, you are watching The Poetry Show and in today's Poetry Show, we are moving on. So first, I want to say thank you for being patient with me. It's been a long time waiting to start off Season 3. But I've got some news for you. There is going to be no more Poetry Show on YouTube. In fact, if you're watching this video on YouTube, this will be the last Poetry Show video you see on YouTube. Unless you go and check out the previous episodes. Now what's that for? What's the reason for that? Well, for me, the internet used to be cool. It used to be all blog rings and static personal fan pages and niche communities being built around these like tiny interests that people had. And YouTube used to be really cool. I swear, like when I started this channel, it felt like there were maybe a hundred bloggers and you could kind of keep all of their content and all of their output in your head at any given time. It just kind of felt like you were connected to people in a way that was a bit more meaningful. I used to do these reply videos to people and we'd have this kind of like asynchronous face-to-face -face conversation, which I really got a lot out of at the time. And I think we've lost a lot in that. And I think it's in those losses um, that I've decided to do something a little bit different, which I think is particularly suited to the poetry show and what it's always stood for. And I think what a lot of the viewers for this channel um, really appreciate. What I really miss is that small internet, that small internet that showed you how big the world really was because it connected you to people all over the world, but in such a way that you didn't feel like the world was overwhelming and therefore you had to stay in your own little bubble of it. I think it really helped us break out in a way that I think the modern internet is kind of stopping us from doing. But you see, it doesn't have to be like that. There's a movement happening right now. It's been going on for a couple of years called the Fediverse. Now, if you haven't heard of that, it's gonna sound a bit weird. But essentially what the Fediverse is, is this idea of a decentralized internet. When we think of the centralized internet, we think about these big corporations that own the handful of websites that you go on. In fact, there's that joke going around at the moment that there's only four websites around at the moment and each of them contain only screenshots of the other three. And you can probably decide for yourself what those uh, four websites or five websites might be. I don't need to give them any airtime because you're on them all day anyway. But the idea is that if we can take back power from those centralized internet companies, those companies that basically feed off of your data and do so in order to better advertise to you, sell your information, and sometimes work in league with governments that you might not necessarily um, want to have your information shared with. Uh, I think particularly in Australia, we have the AA bill, the Access and Assistance bill, which basically, you know, hamstrings all these developers into having to give over data um, that you didn't necessarily think was going to be shared with a corporate entity or a, uh, more importantly, with an enforcement entity. So decentralization takes us away from that movement. It takes us away from the centralization. It takes us away from the corporate, uh, the corporatization of the internet in such a way that I think we can actually get back what used to be really good about the internet. So that's kind of why we're doing it. What does that look like practically for you? Well, nothing really. The videos will still exist. You'll just have to go to a different URL to find them. Now you might be asking, what do I think this has to do with the poetry show? If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, or if you've seen any of the videos at all, hopefully you've gotten the impression from me that I don't believe that there is a single definable truth about what poetry is or what great poetry has to be. You know, I don't think there should be a single arbiter of taste when it comes to poetry. I think if you have a little niche of poetry that you're really into and for whatever reason it speaks to your soul in a way that's meaningful, then that's it. That's all it needs to be. Nobody absolutely nobody gets to tell you that that isn't poetry, that it isn't creative, that it isn't nourishing, or that it's not important. Because you get to decide that. That is the absolute one single truth and beauty about poetry. A lot of people hate poetry. 
and they hate poetry often because they were taught it in a school in a way that did it very poorly, that told them that there were definite readings for things, that there were absolute standards to which things must be held. And that idea, that idea of absolutes and there being a single source of truth is an argument for centralization. All of the poetry exists in this bucket. And if you've got something that doesn't belong in this bucket, then it's not poetry. Decentralization takes the idea that we actually have a network of things that might decide to call themselves poetry and they can connect with each other. They can choose to view other instances of poetry as something that's valid and that they want to um, communicate with or to, to work with or something that they just want to reject, which again is also their right. But for me, the central thing about this channel has always been trying to break down the barriers. And unfortunately for me, I think one of the reasons I found it hard to continue doing this channel on YouTube is that YouTube, YouTube itself kind of becomes this kind of personality cult. And you get all of these metrics that tell you like how your videos are performing and when people turned off. And, and that's useful if you're trying to build a brand but like, who wants to build a brand? Certainly not poets. I mean, poets want to get paid, don't get me wrong, and they should get paid if people provide something that nourishes your soul in a way that you find meaningful. If somebody enriches your life, then why wouldn't you pay them for that? I just don't necessarily think that internet mattresses are the best source of income for poets. So, I want to stop doing it. I want to stop chasing branding. I want to stop trying to be an influencer. And it's hard to do that when you're in YouTube because you've got to fight against the algorithm. You've got to try and, you know, boost your numbers and you've got to get into that, you know, suggested next video thing. Whereas the platform I'm going to introduce you to doesn't do that. Instead, it shows you the video you came to see. It shows you other videos on the platform. It looks a hell of a lot like YouTube used to look in 2006. And that's not to say that this platform is regressive, it's actually very forward looking. But I think that you'll all get a kick out of using it. So where are we headed? We're headed to Peertube. Peertube is a federated, decentralized version of YouTube, essentially. Um, it's a video hosting platform, it's got some other little neat features built into it. It's not as fully featured as uh, YouTube, but in some respects that's a good thing. I'm a little bit wary about some of the moderation tools that exist for it, so that might be something we have to feel out for ourselves. But I have to say that moderation on the YouTube channel um, for Poetry Show has never been an issue. Uh, I think people who seek out poetry videos generally are better people. So that speaks well of you if you're watching this. But we'll be moving to Peertube. Peertube basically is hosted across a number of different instances, which you don't need to concern yourselves with um, in terms of the technicalities. But what that does mean is that um, the instance I put these videos up on to begin with might not be the instance they're on a few years from now. So I'm not gonna name the instance. Instead, what I'll do is I'll keep a link to the instance that this video will live at um, in the comments below on YouTube. If you're seeing this on Peertube, then Welcome to the other side and thanks for watching. Um, but that's going to be one thing that will have to be a little bit fluid. So what's the plan for season three of the poetry show? Well, at the moment I'm thinking it's going to be maybe 12 episodes and then a break. And then maybe we'll continue with season four or something else. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. I've got maybe six or seven of the videos already planned. I'm going to start recording those today. I'll upload them kind of, you know, on a weekly basis as I used to with uh, season two. And um, I really hope that you'll all join me on Peertube. So that's it for now. Um, if you have any comments, then please reach out to me. Um, you can reach out to me on Mastodon or you can um, drop some comments in the, the below this video, either on YouTube or on um, Peertube. I'll, I'll check both. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm really excited about what this uh, new season of uh, the poetry show is going to do and i'm really hoping that it helps us grow uh, a new community of poetry lovers and fediverse citizens so thanks for watching and i will catch you next time